Can you imagine for a second a hype machine so hell-bent on making sure we're wound up like a clock just because a particular episode happens to be featuring a particular actress? I mean, Ruddy Nori, I think they'd spent half the budget on her or something. I mean, the last seven, eight, nine months, has this been a marketing exercise or, or some sort of Pavlovian experiment in human conditioning? <sighs> Titles. So I think we should address the most important question. Who is Macy Williams and why should we care? The first part of that question is pretty easy to answer. She's a Sildir, the brand new walking talking MacGuffin from the mind that bought you River Song. Take from that what you will. The second part of the question, why should we care, is a lot more complex and requires a lot of retrospective thinking, and arguably a very postmodern critique of the very medium I'm using to address the question in the first place. Reviews. People crave reviews. Reviews of Doctor Who episodes, reviews of Doctor Who episodes that have already been on, that they've already watched. You could say that by its very nature, a, a review is uh, a method of evaluation a way of informing people uh, of the particular merits or problems inherent in a piece of artwork, uh, be it literature, film, cinema, whatever. Uh, it could be a viewer's guide to tell people what to watch, what to avoid. Uh, it could be something talking about uh, themes that were raised, a discussion and a debate. However, in, in my experience, at least 99% of the time in my experience, uh, reviews feel like um, an echo chamber for people who either liked something or didn't like something. That's, that's all I really get out of them at this point, I'm a bit tired. I mean, I could spend, I could spend the time that I've got here talking to you about what a review is, but that's a little bit beside the point and I'm not going to ramble, so let's carry on. Reviews lead us quite neatly to the we in the we part of why do we care. We is you. We is me. We is anyone who's been bored enough to read, watch, write, comment on a review at any point. The entire audience of Doctor Who, we're a minority. We're the 10% who are constantly engaged talking about it on Twitter, Facebook, Bebo, MySpace, uh, LiveJournal. The people who just won't sit down, shut up and just enjoy it, you know, that that's us. And, you know, we, we, we like people to know that. We're the people who talk about it constantly. And for us, I guess, the show had a, has a special meaning that we, we feel obliged to talk about it in the way we do. Going back to what I was saying about uh, an echo chamber, I think that could be misconstrued slightly. I'm not necessarily saying that an echo chamber is a bad thing. In fact, I think in this case, it's a very uniquely human thing. You know, we... As, as people crave acceptance. We like to know that other people out there uh, share our views on whatever, on minute in things, in uh, little observations, in shared opinions essentially. Why? Because we're human. We, we want to connect with people and Doctor Who is, is a medium through which we do that. Doctor Who is a medium through which we go about creating things, writing about things, sharing things with other people dressing up um, and and you know it's become a very significant part of our overall social experience and through it we've formed some pretty significant social bonds and and that's really important to us and essentially that's that's what brought quite a lot of us together in the first place I mean just look at the five Foo fans I wouldn't be as close friends with a lot of them if it wasn't for Doctor Who where would I be? I'd probably be on the Battlestar Galactica forum or something, talking about Battlestar Galactica and how great it was and that everyone should watch it. Yeah, it's really good. In our heads, we've all essentially worked out what we think about the show, what we expect from it, and what we what we think is going to happen in its short and long-term future. Oh, and of course, whether or not a woman should be the Doctor at some point, and of course, whether or not that woman should in fact be Zay Ashton, because she is in fact the shit. So essentially for us, Macy Williams has just become either another nail in the coffin or another reason why Doctor Who is still going strong. It's either one or the other at this point. It's become very polarising and it's become very upsetting, but this is what reviews and echo chambers and Gallifrey Base has essentially done for the community. It's a bit of a sad truth really, but 
that's where we are. Either way, whether or not you're a detractor or a cheerleader, Doctor Who is still a show that we care deeply about. Hell, you wouldn't have watched this far into the review if you didn't care, right? Because obviously you want to know what I think, which is coming in about 20 seconds time. The takeaway message is to know that whether you don't like the show at the moment, or whether you do, we're all on the same side. Because at the end of the day, we all care. And that's really nice when you think about it. Having said that, the girl who died. It was okay, I guess, wasn't it? Some quite enjoyable fan service that led to a slightly disappointing revelation. I felt it essentially paled in comparison to Jamie Matheson's previous two scripts, and and I really think it lacked the exceptional characterization that we saw in Stephen Moffat's last script, uh, The Witch is Familiar. I really enjoyed that one. As always, a very good performance from Peter Capaldi, and I was just bewildered at his reaction to seeing Macy Williams like she had some incredibly significant cosmological importance. Never mind, though. Six out of ten, I guess. Um, I already missed the two-part format, and I'm off. See you later. Bye. Is that... Is that Dan? <laughs> oh, and also you can check out the 5 Fans website where you can give us your verdict on the girl who died. Alright, I'm done. See ya.